Hey guys, I'm going to give you seven tips about remote design sprints that you should definitely listen to before you run them yourselves. There's so much to say about design sprints and remote design sprints, so subscribe to our channel below because you're going to find a gold mine of videos that talk about design sprints, remote design sprints, UX, UI, and innovation. There are many reasons for why a company would want to do a remote sprint. Usually their teams are spread out. A lot of times they acquire different companies from different places. So very, very early on in the process, when we started sprinting, customers asked us for the service. The first thing that comes to mind when you think of remote design sprints is, what tool do I use? Well, there's actually two. There's Mural and Miro. And they're both very, very similar. They're basically interactive whiteboards um, that have a lot of the same functionality but we chose to use Mural because it has a special voting feature for the note and vote parts. When we create a Mural, we make sure that we have a different Mural for each day of the sprint. In the sprint, there's a lot of alone time where you work alone and you think alone, and so it's important to create these personal spaces inside the Mural where people can go and do all that work. And then we create the together spaces. These are the spaces where the exercises kind of come together and we vote on something and then we move forward. Tip number two, time. So obviously this is a huge problem because everyone is in a different time zone and it's a big mess. And if you do the four day sprint, you're gonna to have to find two days where there's a window of six or seven hours and all these people have to get together during that time. So that means that some people will be sprinting from eight o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the afternoon, while their colleagues will be sprinting from four o'clock in the afternoon to 10 at night. It's important that design sprints are as short as possible, so try to make them six hours and not eight. In the case where time differences are extreme, like 12 hours apart, you'll have to really break up those sprint days. So you'll have to have four workshops instead of two, for instance. Tip number three, breaks. So breaks are important for basically every sprint, whether it's remote or not. And usually you take them every 60 to 90 minutes, but when you do a remote sprint, really, really try to take a break every 60 minutes and make it even five minutes. Although sometimes you've got smokers, so make it seven minutes so they can finish that up. Tip number four, have a preparation exercise. So before you sprint, you're gonna send out an email explaining what all these people are gonna get into. And in that email, you're gonna explain about this new tool that you're gonna use, which is Mural. And it's really, really great if you add a link to the mural and create a preparation exercise. In this exercise, ask them to go to their personal areas and create a post-it. Ask them to write their name, their role, what they expect from the sprint, and a really, really fun icebreaker-like question like, what's your favorite band? Or tell us something about you that nobody else knows. Tip number five, have a warm-up exercise. So the first thing you'll be doing in your sprint is asking people to have a warm-up exercise and it's really based on their preparatory exercise that we talked about in the sprint before. So they'll be going to their personal areas and copying and pasting their note into a public area and then kind of telling everyone about all these icebreaker kind of things that we asked before. This really creates a wonderful atmosphere and people feel like they know each other more and it also um, gives them an edge on understanding how to use the tool. Tip number six, create the solutions off screen. So in general, you wanna create as much of the exercises off the screen as possible because people really get tired of being on screen all the time. And the solutions part of it is a great, great time to go off screen and everyone goes into their own corner and really thinks about what their solution is and they sketch their solutions there. So what you'll ask them to do is very, very similar to the regular sprint, which is to take a4 pieces of paper or letter for those who live in the US <laughs> and create a solution, a three-part solution. But the difference here is that they'll be photographing those solutions and editing it to a gallery that you've created in the mural like this one. And you'll be asking them to annotate all of their solutions with post-its inside the mural like this. So during the sprint, the mural can get really, really heavy with information and performance can go down depending on how many people are using it at the same time. And so it's really, really important, not only psychologically, to break up these murals into different days, but also for performance purposes. So just remember, on the first day, when people create their solutions, ask them to paste their solutions into the second day's mural. So you probably have a lot more questions about remote sprints, and I'll be happy to answer them. Just write them in the comments below. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we make videos all the time, every week, about many things, sprint, UX, UI, and all that good stuff.